So it's gonna. So now we're in pain. We're still doing? alive. You've got some time, you know, before you have to leave. <laughs> uh, sure, at least. Yeah. He's so proud of himself. And now, man is pushing uh, the daisies. Uh, or is he? Because uh, with a bit of leave yes, nitrogen, yes. we stop the growth. And now here's the exciting Come parts. On, shake it for Run me. over her! One of you must be mine. <sighs> Olivia's trying the uh to find her ticket in the briefcase. It ain't happening. So yeah, running over is an option. However, we do have a partner in crime. Um we've got our head D boy. We have Salvador, yes. Salvador? There he wait, is. Wait. Listen carefully, there's a gun in the trunk of this car, oh. but the trunk key is with my body somewhere in the meadow behind the greenhouse. Find it! Right, and tell oh, Eva great. that I know she will yeah. the alliance wisely when I am gone. But when I bite this explosive tooth, the deadly cloud will sprout not just my target, but me as well. Your target? What are you- Okay. Thinking? Get out of there. Oh. Farewell, my <gasps> friend. What were you talking about with the head of the LSA in there? Uh-oh. Uh oh. Got something you want to share with the class? Only this. Viva la revolucion! Ah! Yes! <laughs> no. Now that, now that's painful. He's fine right where he is. What, Salvador? Right yeah. It's locked. Right in the jazz. My scythe. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you know? Sal hey. all alone. Oh, figures he did because he was a good man. One for me. So now, it's amazing how Salvador's ticket is still drawn to him. So now the question is: We're on a mound full of people's corpses. Salvador's body is behind the greenhouse somewhere. How are we In going to find man. it? We use the ticket as a metal detector. Pretty fucking much, yes. And the trouble is that it is very fucking clumsy, but it does work. That is the solution. Okay. Uh, like the first part of it, uh, funny enough, is actually just kind of getting there because this kind of camera angle stuff kind of makes it seem uh. like it's Whereas like, I, you have I to am a little bit glad I'm not doing all the controls now. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it's it's weird because like again, I, from the from the original version I played of this, I don't remember being as clunky. And um, like again, with 3D adventure games, you're always gonna have a little bit of jank, just because like this is one of the first ones, and many often believed to be the best one. Um, so naturally, there's a few design flaws in between because like it's a basically a new frontier um but weird enough i think the remastered version in a roundabout way has just kind of accentuated the positives and the negatives in in equal measure mm. you know like the actual uh, we'll probably talk about this when we review the game outright but like this would be an example of like um you know when you have an invisible wall you know when you're clicking around it you can tell you can kind of pick out the boundaries but when you're actually controlling something you feel like it's not... it's almost like no it's right there i can just reach it why won't you give it to me you know that's how it feels like sometimes so, well, yeah. i just i just know not from when it. i i was doing it that like hmm, i don't know whether it was the controls just weren't all in line with how the transition changed really in the direction and that made it awkward and obviously i haven't played the original so i don't know if that was always been the case Mm. This must be Hector's murderous oh. moth. Seems to be attracted Look, to something. I like the way. idea of the style of the graphics. I like the. Uh, this is a wide angle shot. I guess this isn't bad. Yeah. Um, I 
seem to be attracted to something over this way. Wide angled. Am I missing something? Or, you know, is there some little pixel that I can I'm I'm trying to find here? I don't which seems to be the case with this particular one. Yeah, like, I mean, like at, at least at least these guys never did pixel hunting to that effect. Like this is probably the one time they actually do, and like this is the last thing in the game. Like essentially, the last puzzle is a pixel hunt. It is a metal detector thing, um, and like they don't normally do cheap tricks like that, which I'm quite, I'm quite grateful for, because some adventure games that I'm aware of are fuckers for it. You know, doing any, but um, well, at least this way, like it is. So much justified because, like I said, you are trying to find a needle in the haystack. You have your compass, and you basically go from there. Um, but uh, the one thing I would say is that, uh, and what kind of threw me off a good bit when I was doing this bit, but it took it took me quite some time to do it, now. was because I was looking at the ticket fluttering in a certain direction, but it actually isn't the ticket I should be looking at. It's actually Manny's arm is the trick here. Oh, for God's sake! I would have—I was watch, i have been watching the ticket the whole time. Yeah. Does oh. he have any? Do he have any arm is pointing basically at seven o'clock there, right? So yeah. it's in—it's in this direction, right? Um. So then, so then when basically when his like when it's not fluttering, he'll kind of took a back, took the ticket back in. Again, this game is actually like almost like it's it, it's subtle to a fault sometimes when it's like you're trying to pick up on a certain thing it's doing. It is subtle enough to say that there is a difference in direction, but you as a player almost don't pick up on it because you're expecting it to be more obvious, you know, kind of way. Yeah. In the same way where, like, you know, Manny is, like, looking at something in particular, so he's going to talk about that thing, whereas it's actually the thing beside you you want to look at, you know? Yeah. Just completely, just a different game logic, that's all. And not bad, not Not good or bad or indifferent, it's just, it's just different. But it, its difference isn't explained. That's the the crucial bit. Yeah, that's true. Um, like I think, I think well, he could have like a, a verbal cue of, "Oh man, it's fluttering in this direction," or "It seems to be pulling my arm this way." I don't, I don't really yeah, it would have helped if he was saying like, "Oh, we need to go further south" or something. But like, yeah. it's, it's this way. But as I said, like it is your what you have to go really by. Do that. Um, what you have to go, what you have to go by is essentially the arm being pointed in that direction, and then it'll eventually eventually point downwards the closer you get to it. And there you go. But even to know that this giant mound was bones and not rocks is, you know, graphics-wise, was the issue as well. Yeah, exactly. was an issue. I don't think you can do anything about that, unfortunately. It's just the yeah, and I, I know that, but like, I think I probably would have spent a few minutes going, "Oh, these are the bones you're talking about." Mm-hmm. This must be the key. And now we have uh, Salvador's keys, which means we can now arm ourselves again for the final battle. How do you think? How good a shot do you think Manny is? Oh, it'd be so annoying if he blew this. Well, I mean, he is dead. Like <laughs> we should, we should ah, point yes. out that and say. Lots of ammo. Freeze, Hector. Those in front. Yeah, you heard me. So we got plenty of ammo, unlimited ammo, in fact. So let's go and take down Hector. Let's do this. Let's do. It. I'm not getting any closer until he runs out of ammo. If he runs out of ammo, that is. There he is. Oh, Olivia, who's out there? I'm the Grim Reaper, lard ass, and you're my next customer. Shouldn't you be a batch of posies by now? The answer is maybe. I'm in a patch of posies. Does that count? <laughs> I can ring a rosy if that helps. 
Nice try. So, oh, they're terrible. They're both terrible shots. They are both, both quite bad shots. Now, you remember the last time we had a boss battle with Domino. Um, the solution wasn't to actually fight him head on. It was to outsmart him. Yes. So what, what happens if we were to, say, shoot that water tank right there? Okay. Because that water is being is pumping into the greenhouse that's okay. fully sealed. And thus, Hector is dying. That doesn't that, sound again, good. that is not intuitive at all. I'm a little no. bit annoyed at that. Well, like I said, it's 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 an outside the box attempt. Like again, the the first boss battle taught you that like you're not going to beat somebody head on. You have to outsmart yeah, them. Yeah, you have to be tricky. And in but, fairness, had I triggered the dialogue, that would have said that's a water tank that feeds it straight to the greenhouse. So that's your clue. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Hector exploded. Okay. That is some bunch of flowers. He's a great bunch of flowers. He is. But that's it. That's us. That's us done. Hector's dead. Everyone has their end tickets. And now we're going home. No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. And we're being let in too. Oh, oh. So Manny has got us good you karma. Can them if you want. They're all here. How about yours? The company gave me one on the other end. Sort of a retirement present. And, uh, demons ride free, right? Aw, oh, man, you know I can't go with you. I'm a spirit of the land and all that. Oh. I can't ever leave this world. I guess I got so wrapped up in saving oh. people, I just assumed yeah. I'd be able to save you too. Yeah, but I don't need to be saved. I like it here. I'm not all alone in that basement anymore, thanks to you. Yeah. I got a new job and all these new friends. I'm a big demon success story. So, I guess this is it then. Yep. Give me, yeah, give me a hug. I have had. Oh, that's a big hug. Bye. It isn't a just. <laughs> Mm. There's all the uh, workers from the rest of the world, all freed. Gladys and his babas. Manny? Yeah. Even the mariachi bands at the start of the game are there, too. The ones that are on Manny's desk. Are we it's a full circle moment. You know, sweetheart, if there's one thing I've learned, it's this. Nobody knows what's going to happen at the end of the line. So you might as well enjoy the trip. And off they go. Manny and Meche die together. Just what they just as they always wanted. And that's that's Grim Fandango. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um you'll probably see in the credits. That is referring to I think one of their visual artists who died during the production of the game. Yeah. So, yep, that or I don't know if, it, if he died like before or after the game was made. I think it, it must have been with the after the remaster. I, I assume because like there would have been like a ten or twelve year difference between it. But um, but yeah, that is uh, if there is there a job at Peeper uh, from uh, the text one of the texture artists. So, so Burp Pop, that is Grim Fandango done. Um, like I said, would have been nice to perhaps uh, uh, to play the majority of this game in person but we couldn't for uh, for different differing reasons but you've mm -hmm. watched the playthrough you, you've you seen the story you've seen the characters you've seen the settings the vibe the ambiance if you will um, what did you make of Grim Fandango? I um, loved it I'm definitely up there with the best of the Clickta Things games 
Okay. Um, really, really enjoyed the weird um, the, the the lore of the game, the mm. the the dialogue, the the visual jokes, um, Glottis. Um, where the game let it down was the controls and the the transitions between the, the scenes or the different angles of the scenes that just frustrated me to no end and then I think as we've mentioned throughout the playthrough there's kind of little things like um, making sure Manny's looking at the thing yeah. that you want to interact with and um, and like in a remastered game any of those glitches you'd hope would get fixed and mm. filtered out so that that's probably my, my downside to it um, the art style love it, the music love it the, yeah it just, it's been a good click the thing Hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think that's a probably a fair assessment in in that sense. I think it's uh, it it's a it's a weird time in in games when uh when the venture games had to adapt from two D to three D, and not a lot of them survive. It has to be said. I mean, uh, I can think of a couple of franchises that just didn't bother. And um, you know, and it, uh, to be fair, that's that's not only just uh, point of click games. That's like platformers. Um, you know, fucking any other type of genre you can think of where everything was going to 3D and we're kind of in this interim kind of phase where like the technology was there to do something in 3D but not do it well you know um, mm. like this would have been like Grim Fandango would have been I want to say 1998 I want to say I could be wrong uh, no it was indeed 1998 and um, so just to kind of put that in perspective the other games out around that time would have been Ocarina of Time, uh, Metal Gear Solid, um, the third Tomb Raider game, uh, the well, first Spiral, okay. uh, Crash Bandicoot Three. All would have been on the same in the same year. So, yeah. so platformers and stuff like that were had already transitioned to three D, and they were all that kind of the P- PlayStation One, um, N sixty four era in a sense. So they kind of had their gameplay down right. So now you have this like this new generation of games. And the point of click um, games are looking like dinosaurs, relatively speaking, because they're still 2D and static and there's no action. So now you have uh, you have games like this trying to keep up um, and trying to do something different as well. Uh, so with Grim Fandango trying to do that, I think what it does well, it's really, really well done. Like I, when, when we did our top 100 games years ago, I put this in our top 10, in my top 10. Because I genuinely think, as you said, Burkbot, this is one of the best point of click games you can actually play. Because it is a very point and click game, if you know what I mean. There's no danger, there's no risk, there's no harm. It's just outthink the game. You know, work yeah. at the bulk there. And also just get lost in it. Like the like the River Cavern level, I think, is just wonderful. It's a wonderful just like if you just wanted to give up the plot for a while and just wander around and talk to people for no reason, you can do and that. Guess the jokes. Um, yeah, yeah, really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, um, and again, the, the biggest things again, the, the positives you always get in this genre are like the locations and the characters and the story, and those are the three best things in this game. Like I, we've waxed lyrical about how how wonderful Gladys is as a character, but then on the playback, I'm looking at thinking like. Like, I've got a new appreci- appreciation for the Geppetto character solely because of that last scene where he just like sings along as he walks off to his death. You know, it's just, it's the macabre nature of the game, I think, that really kind of tickles my brain a bit. You know, because it does, yeah. it does play in that little noir aspect of it where, like, you know, it's a, it's an, it is it, at, at the heart of it a noir love story, but it has all these other elements to it as well. Um, and also as well, it breaks a very obvious rule in um, in storytelling and, and writing by taking these huge gaps in between. Like it literally is like a year later to between chapter one and two, which is something that like I've been told constantly never to do as a writer. You, if you're writing something, do it over a short time. Do like like yeah. be coherent with the with the timeline. But again, Tim Schafer, the designer, would say, well, you're in the land of the dead. Time doesn't fucking matter, <laughs> you know. It, purgatory is purgatory, whichever way you put it. So time is relevant, you know. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. I, I, um, with some of the things like um, 
I liked the jump. I think having it in the different sections and the jump in a year, like I think that made sense in terms of the plot and you're kind of getting the dreariness of Manny's existence, really. Yeah. Um, so I think that was good for that. Uh, but yeah, I agree. Usually it's like three hours later and you're like, ah, oh, time jump. Or what do you mean? This is 10 years later at the epilogue of a book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to know how he got out of that flaming, you know, rocket. Hmm. Also, um, um, yeah. One of the one of the other fascinating things about this game is that it's actually technically one of the poorest sellers in Lucas Arts history. Um, I I can imagine it's a niche audience that they would have been hitting, like it's the Latina. Uh, that kind of like a uh, culture day, day the dead sort of s thing that might have you know ruled a lot of the uh, usual market out if they mm. thought, oh this is, not, this is not for me this is for um, the other, another culture you know or maybe someone's like oh is this going to be taking the piss out of another culture not yeah. going to stay away from it um, but I think like as in on the outside looking in it, I don't think there's anything too uh, culturally insensitive about the game. Um, but that mm. could have been an off-putting thing to the buyers back in the 90s. Yeah, perhaps. I, I think maybe it was because, like, I, I think sometimes, like, with a... Uh, I think you say this a lot about LucasArts games, is that their their games are ex- are exceptionally original. You know, it's like, you don't land... The only real franchise they have arguably well there's probably two actually there's monkey islands which is obvious um, and the other one would be the salmon max adventures which we haven't touched yet on this uh, on the series but they'd be two closest things to franchises they actually have they do a lot of one-offs and if you ask anybody in the lucas arts realm that was at stylix's choice because they want to do the opposite to what the likes of sierra were doing where they were pumping out a game every year for certain franchises and they had so many on the go. You had your, you had King's Quest, Quest for Glory, Space, Police, Eco Quest. Then later on, there's so many of them, and they're just it's quantity over quality. Whereas, whereas LucasArts were the opposite. They wanted to put out these original games and have it well contained and well compressed, and basically have your feel from that. And that being said, Grim Fandango was a great example of that because, good fucking look at the sequel out of this. You know, you you have to yeah. have new characters and and the the same premise, but then, you know, who's the main character? Gladys, like with another band, bunch of mates that do the same thing. It's it's hard to kind of you can't really tap that well when it's already been run dry. You know, um, and you can say that for a lot of their games. Really, it's a very it's very hard for them to do sequels to games that they do because it's kind of been done. And if you did a sequel, it'd be very trite and it wouldn't work. You know, um. Unless you've let yourself a thread to, to pull on, which they have in some in some respects, but um, but yeah, I suppose the, the cons, like um, I know certainly from from my point of view, and and perhaps from yourself when you were playing a bird bot, was actually the controls, and yeah. it, it's just kind of inevitable, really, with that kind of generation that it, it was going to feel a bit clumsy. What I was very surprised with though, because I was playing it on the Switch, and this would be my third time playing it. I played it on the PC initially, once upon a time. With the mouse and keyboard and all this sort of stuff. And that is the way, that is how the, the game is intended to be played. That is absolutely evident because half the half the, the clumsiness, I think a lot of it is actually accentuated by having a controller, you know? Um, right, yeah. Especially on the Switch, I was very surprised how it just certain things just didn't seem to mesh right, you know? Um, but... In the grand scheme of things, because it's on the Switch and it's because it's on consoles, it's actually probably done better now than it has when it got released initially. Because it just got that extra look of paint and it's so accessible that people can play it now and actually appreciate why critics at the time made it considered it one of the games of the year. And you you remember the names I called out there, Burpot. 1998 was a serious fucking year for video games. Year it was, yes. You know? Um, so to, to kind of rub shoulders with that company says a lot about how good this game actually is. But as I said, story is brilliant. The characters are brilliant. The atmosphere, the music. Like this is game, this is another game where you can buy the soundtrack as a as an as a separate CD. 
and it's all orchestral, it's all the mariachi bands, it's it's all that sort of vibe. It's just a tremendous effort. It really, really is. Um, and it's kind of it's it's a very quintessential Lucas Arts game. Sometimes you, they don't quite get the uh, they get the critical acclaim for it, but like they don't get quite the the um mainstream fanfare that they probably deserve. But again, they probably don't want it. They like having their little like workshop and working on original games and they just want to be left alone essentially. <laughs> so um depending on which way you look at it. But anyway, um overall Burpbot, you are very, very happy with your Grim Fandango experience. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Oh, that's good effort. Yeah, I think I think that's okay. Um with you know uh, I think Monkey Island uh lit- the, the Return of Chuck, that one being my number, like that's my number one, I think. So you actually, you actually have number two, the the, the second monkey on as your as your top as your ba- as your baseline. There is that is that what you're? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like I love the first. I I just think I had more fun. Maybe I was kind of used to the dynamic of the game by the time we we're into the second one. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's how I go. Yeah, I think uh, you're gonna have Monkey Island up there. Grim Fandango. Um, uh, I think. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, with Tim Curry. Oh, uh, Gabriel Knight. Yeah, that would be up there. Uh, I think Gabriel Knight might just pip Grim Fandango in my pecking order. Okay. Do you know but, what? I but don't it's think up in that realm of things. Yeah, like I think it's a hard. I think it helps sometimes that uh, for, for for the games you mentioned there, we were actually in the room playing it as well. So you were actually able yeah, to. True. We were actually able to experience it proper. I think sometimes you're doing a remote, you miss certain things, and you can you miss a certain alcove because like I'm on the mm. clock trying to capture stuff and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, look, with I th- I think that's a fair fair shade anyway. But it it didn't good company anyway because like I said, we played some cracking games, um, on this uh, on this series. And now it's time to decide where we go next. So okay. Uh, so now it, it is going to the eternal question of this series, which is click or twist. Now, um, you have a choice whether to basically okay. stick with more of the same, or go for something completely different. Uh, and I will give no clues as to which one means which. <laughs> I am gonna go twist. You're gonna go twist. Okay, so you want to go for something completely different. Completely, yeah, and I'm shaking to think what this could be. Okay, so I'll give you a second choice, Burkwell. Right, so mm-hmm. we are at the moment in this series, we have a bit of a crossroads in terms of would you like to play a sequel or would you like something completely different? A sequel to, to what? To something we played already on the series. Uh, okay, or something completely new, completely different. Oh, like there is, I'm just terrified. Is there a ripper too that I don't know about, and could that be my punishment? That is the decision you're gonna have to make, Burpa. So, you Ah! have a a second clicker twist here. Do I get to find out what the other option is? I will tell you the other option if once you once you pick yes. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my twist and just go completely new. Okay, right. Oh, I've been sitting on this one for a while. So, um, we haven't done a bad game in a while, Bert, but <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So you remember you remember Broken Sword, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we remember how um, you know, we've had these kind of uh, as it were, this uh, scully, um, uh, like scully and uh, and a Mulder like sexual tension, will they, won't they situation, um, and that inspired a lot of a lot of uh, kind of game designers at the time of like, oh, here's a a great game about a certain level of mythology and these kind of two or three characters interacting with each other, and here's this really competent guy who's able to work through all of his fucking problems in a rational manner and here's his wonderful sidekick and all these wonderful characters. So imagine now a game that tries to do all them 
and completely fucks it. Oh, okay. Absolutely fucking bottles it. Now I'm saying, Burpa, I will now I can I can take the bullet here and I can play this game by myself if you want to. Alternatively, we could meet up, you get white girl wasted, and we rip this game to shreds. Okay. So the game I propose to you is called The Mystery of the Druids. Um, okay. It is the, I haven't heard it, of it. You have not. It is a very obscure game for obvious reasons. <laughs> right. As it's a terrible game. Um, it is uh, made by a crowd called House of Tales. They're a German uh, developer. Um, oh, and I've heard of that name. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many, what other games would they have done out of the time? Um, oh, actually, no. I think that was like a fun fair from like my childhood. Yep, that sounds about right. Um, considering the other games that you that they have made, um, are also pretty shit to be honest with you. Okay. Um, so let's not let's let, let's not go there. Um, but um, this how's the tales? This is actually the first game, funny enough. Um, so starting to mean to go on, guys. Um, so um, the mystery of the druids is, is essentially, um, take broken sword, working about talking about the um, the the Templars and the Templar myths and so forth. And the mystery of the druids is taking that book, doing it with the British Order of Druids, um, and the uh, Druidic lore and the Celts and some sort and stuff along those lines. So it's kind of like the Stonehenge myth that they're tackling here, or the Celts. Okay. So to give you the premise, you are playing an inspector in Scotland Yard. His name is Brent Halligan, and he's uh, investigating a series of skeleton murders in England. And they seem to have some sort of link to the druids. And um, that's all I'll give away for now because I think yeah, the shock right. value and the um the the shock value alone of uh, of the game I think would uh would work out quite well. So that's all I, I shall say in the matter for the moment. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what um that's what we're look we're we're going for next. Um. So yeah. <laughs> and. What I'm going to say to you is that when you see this game, I just want you to draw it just to point out the point. Or I'm going to make the point that this game is three years younger than Grim Fandango. As in, this was Grim Fandango was 1998. This is 2001. It's a three year okay, difference. Okay, so they had games. time to get this like better, well done. But didn't. that's what you think. That's really what you would think. But alas, <laughs> okay, okay. They, Fucking lass, they did not get it right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do in here, um, and you're going to have, have a lovely time. Uh, trust me, you're going to have a lovely time. Okay, can I ask what was the sequel? Option? The sequel, actually, okay. The two other avenues that you you um you didn't go down. If you had said click, as in, if say if you wanted to say something similar to Grim Fandango, yeah. Um, you would have got the only other 3D point of the adventure they made outside of the Sam and Max series, which was Escape from Monkey Island. Oh. Which was Monkey okay. Island 4. So you miss out on that. Yeah. Okay. And if you had said um, you wanted a sequel to something we've already played, we would be kicking off Broken Sword 2, The Smoke and <gasps> Mirror. Oh, I was just talking about how it would... Okay. Well, so, look, I do a bad game. We can go back to my old trope of good game, bad game, good game, bad game. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. a callback. It's a callback. Um, okay. But yes, don't worry. We are going to have a lot of fun with this because this is a janky, awful, terrible game and it deserves to be ripped out into the light <laughs> for everyone okay, to see. and I'll stock up on booze to get white girl wasted. You should white get... We, we should both get white girl wasted for this, to be honest <laughs> with you. Like, I'll, I'll okay. go on the red wine. I'll bring Amy in. She can get drunk too. Fuck, it doesn't matter. Cool. Like, let's, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just have fun with this one. This is terrible. This is going to be terrible. So, guys, um, that's what to look forward to on Click the Thing. Um, I like to think that people who don't know about the mystery of the Druids is thinking, oh, this sounds like it's going to be a fun playthrough. And the people who do know are going to go, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Because, <laughs> <laughs> my God, there's so many fucking red flags in this game. It's absolutely exceptional. Anyway, that's to look forward to next week, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, we have been clicking the thing, myself and Burkbot. Thank you very much for joining us for this playthrough, Burkbot. I hope you enjoyed Grim Fandango. I hope Goddess mm -hmm. has a special place in your heart like he does in mine. 
and yes, he deserves to be, to be honest with you. And um, and I hope the same the for you. The next time I see, I'll think of Gladys. Exactly, and um, in fact, we're actually going to start just like running around the. We're just going to have the zoomies as a tribute to Gladys, and um, yes. just to. Uh, that's as soon as we finish this record, I'm going to go zoom. Yeah, you do that. You do that. Anyway, folks, we'll see you next time on Click the Thing for something Click completely different. Click the Thing. And until then, good night, everybody. Good night.